It's almost nightfall. Late September in Jerusalem. The anticipation is palatable in the cool night air because it's the last day of the great feast of tabernacles. Tens of thousands have poured into Jerusalem for the celebration, bringing their harvest offering of thanks and camping in tents for the past eight nights, remembering God's faithful provision, not only in the present, but also in the past, even in the hard-pressed desert when their forefathers were coming out of Egypt and making their way to the promised land. You see, the Feast of Tabernacles was a festival of remembrance, remembering how God had provided food and water in the midst of the wilderness and the desert through a miraculous provision of the manna and even causing water to come out of the rock. But listen, hands down, the greatest part of the festival of, of tabernacles was the lighting of the four candelabras there in the courtyard of the women, each standing 75 feet tall. There atop the mountaintop in Jerusalem, against the blackness of the cold autumn night, the brilliance of these massive lights could be seen for miles and miles. And the radiance of the heat would just draw you in. Once lit, the priests would dance in worship and celebration, singing long into the night. And you were invited in your mind's eye to contemplate the Shekinah glory of the Lord against the darkness of the desert night. Think with me for a moment about the darkness of the desert night and the fear that would be associated with it. Deserts are unbearably cold at night. The howling wind cuts through your clothing. It causes your bones and your body to shiver and your teeth to chatter. Wild beasts prowl at night, taking opportunity to hunt and strike prey under the cover of darkness. Without the ability to see, one feels helpless, vulnerable, even lost. The desert can lack identifiable landmarks, causing confusion about the path forward. Which way do we go? And all of this builds into feelings of anxiety and fear. Are we safe? Do we know the way? Will we be sustained? But coming out of Egypt, God has not abandoned his people. Rather, he has shown himself visibly in the form of a cloud that would lead them during the day. And then at night, that cloud would turn into a pillar of fire that would guard them, providing warmth against the desert cold, providing security, warding off wild beasts in the dead of night, providing light so that you could see against the darkness. The visible presence of the Lord revealed, casting out anxiety and fear, leading the people of God in the most difficult of circumstances. Numbers 9 details for us about the dependence that the people of God had towards the Shekinah glory of the Lord. You see, as long as the cloud stayed over the tent, the tabernacle, the people of God remained there encamped. But as soon as the cloud lifted up, the Israelites would set out. And wherever the cloud settled, then they would stop and they would encamp again. Sometimes the cloud was over the tab tabernacle only a few days, other times a long time. But the Lord's command, they stayed or followed. 
Now imagine you are standing there in the temple courtyard, anticipating the magnificent lighting of the final day of the Feast of Tabernacles, invited by God to dream, remembering what it must have been like when his presence was revealed, to have fear cast aside. Because God was there to guide. God was there to protect. He was there to light the way in the darkness. You see, you would gather as close as you could there in the courtyard, waiting for the moment that it was lit and the light and the heat radiated. And then suddenly, a voice calls out, perched atop the crowd, And Jesus proclaims, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The claim could not be more grandiose. I am the sovereign title for God, the eternal creator. I am who I am. I am the light. Borrowing from the Shekinah glory, God's presence there in the wilderness. I am the cloud. I am the pillar of fire. The presence of God revealed his manifest presence. Here I am. I am the light of the world. Friend, the image of darkness isn't solely about Israel in the wilderness. It's an image for life. You see, not only does darkness exist in the trials and uncertainty of life, but darkness exists inside each and every one of us because our sin separates us from the presence of a holy God. Consider for a moment the claim of the Bible that your sin And separation from God causes an internal darkness. Following your own way, you are selfish, arrogant, blinded by pride, overly defensive and critical of others, driven by passions and lacking self-control. And all of this darkness leaves you angry, anxious, and filled with fear. Friend, to your darkness, Jesus says, I am your light. I have come to deal with your sin and to reconcile you to a holy God. I am the manifest presence of God Almighty Almighty, right here, right now. There is an offer on the table for you. Will you bow the knee recognizing that God has sent his son as the king, not only to deal with your sin, but to call you to himself? Or will you harden your heart like the Israelites did? Sorry, like the Egyptians did. In Exodus chapter 14, when God was leading his people out of Egypt... And the Egyptian army was pursuing them and they were caught between the Red Sea and the Egyptian army. That cloud went in between the armies. And catch this, on one side, as they looked at that cloud, that wall, all they could see was darkness. But on the other side, the Israelites, as they looked, they could see a wall of fire and light. The question is, how will you respond to the light of the world? The one who has come to bring light and life. Because the Egyptians had hardened their heart, they only saw darkness, no longer light. As someone who has placed my faith in King Jesus more than 25 years ago, can I tell you, he is the light of my life. He is my hope. He is my peace. He is my joy. Would you repent 
and believe this day. With every head bow and every eye closed, friend, I want to offer you the chance, the ability to respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That he is light, that he is life, that you need him to overcome the darkness of your sin. If you have not, would you right now cry out in your heart? Would you repent? Would you believe in the good news of Jesus? And would you ask God Almighty to save you? He is near, He is willing. Jesus, would you speak? Would you call from death to life? Would you give faith? Would you allow people all across this room and those under the sound of my voice to hear you calling them that you are the light of the world? We pray all of this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you responded to that, If you this morning for the first time placed your faith in Jesus Christ, we want to give you an opportunity to respond. The choir's going to sing just a couple more songs, but listen to me. At the conclusion of service, I and some other ministers will be down here at the front, okay? Would you have the courage to tell someone that you placed your faith in Jesus? There is a card in the pew rack in front of you. On it, there's a simple box for you to check. I need to be baptized or I need to talk to a minister about Jesus. Would you fill that out and would you drop that in the response bins on the way out? Because here's the deal. We never want to miss an opportunity for you to respond to the truth of the gospel. And that is that Jesus is the light of the world.